Hello and welcome to this Armatan tutorial. My name is Painless360 and this time it's all about how to access the on-screen display things inside Betaflight, inside your new Armatan Ready to Fly quad. Uh, this just happens to be my latest Armatan model. This is the Badger, but they all do it. Now because of the way they're connected inside, you can access a little menu with inside Betaflight on your radio and you can change all the settings but specifically this time we're going to talk about changing the settings of your video transmitter now the video transmitter can work in lots of different ways armatan use team black sheep units mainly and those are fantastic video transmitters they work really well and they support all of the standard frequencies channels and powers that you're going to need to fly your new model but occasionally you can get yourself into a little bit of a problem with activating accidentally things like pit mode and other things. And I want to go through what those are and how you can get out of it. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab my goggles, set up my little badger on the desk, and we're going to power it. And I'm going to record what I can see in the goggles so I can show you. And we'll go through, we'll actually look at all the different settings inside the smart audio vtx settings inside the on-screen display and I'll explain what all the pieces mean if you're starting out and want to fly your model on your own and just get to grips with it then i'll show you how you should be set up in the menu and to be honest that's exactly how it is coming from armatan but sometimes in videos that you tend to see all this stuff is glossed over so if you're new to this stuff in beta flight or some of the parts of the smart audio bits of the features menu in beta flight uh, don't make sense or all of that stuff that I've just said don't make any sense don't worry let's go on the bench I'll explain it all now with all that said to access the menu is relatively straightforward this is a mole 2 radio so the throttle and rudder are here and the elevator and aileron are here I'm going to hold the sticks at the nine o'clock position and we are now into the menu now i've got the cover on the screen here so the camera's covered so it's a black background and um, it can help if you point the camera at something dark if you're doing this out in the field now to navigate the actual screens you use this little joystick on the right hand side so that will save you up and down and also allow you to select things too now the main things on here things like uh, profile and on-screen display and those kind of things we're not going to worry about today we're going to spend more time in the features menu so to select the features menu i'm going to push this stick across and here we are into the features so we can select and play with things like black box there's VTX SA, VTX TR and LED strip and other things too. So at the moment, we're only going to worry about these two. In fact, we're only going to worry about this one. This stands for smart audio. There are two protocols or ways that you can talk like this from the flight controller to your video transmitter. Now, because Armatan pre-install TBS units or uh, Unify video transmitters from Team Black Sheep, it's using smart audio. So VTX SA stands for VTX smart audio control. And the next one down VTX TR is for the tramp protocol, which other video transmitters use. Now, all the ones that you're getting on the Armatan stuff is VTX SA. So that's the one we're going to select, so push it across. So this looks a little bit confusing, but it's really not. So at the very top, it tells us that we're using Smart Audio. This is the menu that we want to be in. And underneath that, it shows us the status of the actual system. Now, it's showing us that we are using frequency, which is what the F stands for. I'll explain that in a minute. We're using band F1. That's Fat Shark 1. That frequency that's actually being used is 5740 hertz or 5.74 gigahertz which is just the frequency it's using and the last number 25 is the power now we have to have our goggles set to the same band f1 in order to see this so if you can't see it again the thing i would do is just use your goggles to scan uh, if you have an auto scan function or typically it's going to be set to one of the r bands or the f bands so those are the two that you just want to go through one by one until you find the video so underneath here, we can actually change the band that we want to use. So using the right stick again, we can either go race band, fat shark, or boss cam, A, B, or E. Now we are going to stay with fat shark for the moment because that's what all my equipment's set on. If we want to change the channel, then we can go down to channel and we can select any of the different channels that are available. 
So the next bit down is frequency, where you can actually select the individual frequency that you want. I wouldn't do that. I would keep it as this is. And then we have the power setting. 25 milliwatts is legal in most places, but you can increase the power. And again, it's not going to increase the power until you go into the set and confirm that's what you want to do. But I would also be careful. The power will also allow you to go a lot higher or set it in the menu higher than it can run on the video transmitter. If you try and do that, it will just go to the highest power. So this is what it should look like when you start out. And the trick is what you want to be looking on the top, you want it to say F, something like F1, and then the number after that, and then 25 milliwatts at the end. That's great for setting things up on the bench because it also means your video transmitter isn't going to get too hot by having too high a power level. Now, there's one other part of the menu here that uh, you can wander into and get really confused about, and that is the config menu. In the config menu, these are all of the smart audio config options, and I wouldn't recommend that you go in here and you play anything, but let me show you how to set it so that it all works and you don't get into trouble. The first is the op model. Now, the op model is either going to be free or race. Now, if it's in free, it gives you full power when the quadcopter starts up and it starts transmitting and everything's working absolutely fine. And that's what I would recommend. If it's set to race, then until you actually set a different frequency and use the set command through this menu, you get what's called pit mode. And pit mode is a very low power setting. It'll only give you a video signal out to about five or six meters. And if you get into that mode, then what I would do is come in here and change it back to freestyle, which is what the free is referring to. That will stop pit mode being used. If you're going to race and stuff, then by all means, start in the race stuff and get into that. But for just flying around and playing with this, keep it as free. The next one is the frequency selection method. We can either have the channel, which is what we're set now. That just means that you can select the band and channel that matches the goggles um, or vice versa. This way, you can also select it so that you can actually select the exact frequency you want to use if you want to be a bit smart. I wouldn't go anywhere near that. I would keep that on channel two. Pit mode, again, I wouldn't set this. Uh, there are two pit modes available. There's one called uh, POR and PIT. Uh, POR uh, actually starts transmitting on this POR frequency when it first comes up. It's all there so that you don't accidentally power your model up on the same channel that another pilot is using and stomp all over their signal so they can't see where they're flying. That's a really great thing when you're flying with lots of other people. It's a nice idea. And the POR frequency is the one that it'll start on. Be careful, of course, that whatever POR frequency you're setting here is the one that you're actually going to be able to view on your goggles. Or the other pit mode is PIR, where it uses the set frequency that you've already got set, but it initially starts, again, at a very lower power setting. And I, if you're starting out, would just avoid all of those. So let's go back. So I would recommend when you're coming in here, make sure where it says smart audio, that it says something like F, which is for freestyle, which is full power as soon as the quadcopter comes on. Uh, don't use that if you're gonna fly with lots of other people. Uh, then F1 is the band and channel that we're using. The 5740 is actually just the exact frequency that that corresponds to. And then 25 is the power setting. Again, if you want to set it all up, uh, if you've been in here and uh, go into the config menu and you've accidentally changed anything in here, this is what I'd recommend if you're just flying on your own and getting to use to your new Armatan model, set it up for free channel frequency selection method, leave the pit mode alone and leave the poor frequency alone and you should be able to see everything. Last little tip, once you've got everything in here set exactly how you want it to be, then just uh, select set, then select confirm yes, and then the new settings will immediately change on your video transmitter, whether that's a difference in power or a different channel or a different band. And then it's time to re-scan your goggles or to just manually select that exact same band and channel on those so you can continue to fly your FPV. But hopefully that explains everything. And now you know how to not only access the menu, but now you know how to get into features, 
VTX Smart Audio and how to set your VTX up so that you don't get into trouble.